Well, hello. And today, oh, and it's also hello from him. Oh, and as per usual, always be ready, right in the nuts. Well, oh, anyway, today we're going to start hitting an object and that's that's good. So we've reached a certain point, we call it a 95% point, where you can't really get any better just doing what you're doing. We're going to continue as the series moves on, of course, looking at different things that we're practicing just on the air. And there's very good reasons for that. And I remember my coach saying to me, you don't just start like hitting pads and things like that, like, like you might do in other martial arts, because we, we're paying such fine grained attention to the way that we use structure that the, the data that we get from just hitting hitting pads and bags is too gross. You know, when we hit in full contact, it's too gross. We need like micro feedback. So just think like this is this the body is a system, which is what we're trying to work on. The body is a system itself. It's got all these kind of little loose points in it that you can't possibly feel by just hitting the air. You just can't. So there's loads and loads of things that we can gain by practicing like this, working on the fine grain movement of the posture. But then there's loads and loads of things that we can't progress by doing it like that. So it's kind of, it's the same with every kind of training. Like it's, every kind of training has got its positives and negatives. Classic example is people who treat the punch bag like sparring. Like punch bags are great tools used in the right way with discipline. The only time you should be using a punch bag like it's sparring is if you try to build the cardio for that. Otherwise, it drills in every bad habit under the sun because obviously bags don't hit back, but they do sometimes fall down, land on the foot, uh, or swing back into you if you're not careful. And bags, bags can injure you as well as we'll talk about in a, in a bit. So we want to use a bag in a, in a different way. And we know that in each one, there's all different ways of using objects we know we know more maybe you don't know in in the old days using like cotton balls actually Wang Shang Jai used a punch bag quite early on made out of animal skins so there's nothing wrong with using a punch bag I know in the the kind of fantasy each one world there's people who think they've got magic powers but good luck sparking someone out with your magic powers it doesn't work like that you're going to get a very rude awakening but what we don't want to do is just start hitting a bag really really hard straight away we're going to build progressively and this requires a lot of discipline you can have it all but how much do you want it you've got to be disciplined and you've got to follow the correct method and the next stage in the correct method is to introduce what we call testing structure and testing structure in essence means starting by hitting the bag really light but there's a few things to think about we don't just mean like Hitting the bag like nice and loose like that. She can sometimes do it's a nice warm up just to hit hit really loose on the bag. That's not what we're doing. That's not what we mean by hitting the bag light. There's again some interesting contradictions. So remember I talked about that when we practice on the air like this, we call this the lock point. This is the lock point. And when we hit an object, bag or a person, that's the hit point. We change the concept into the hit point. And the reason is when you hit something, you get feedback into the body. And that changes the way that the structure responds to the movement. And there's, there's quite a lot of interesting things around that that we can look at another time. But for now, all we need to think about is that that feedback is like a teacher for us. That feedback is going to give the, like when we say, E in this sense, like like Yang De Mo says, like we mean something so broad, it covers so many things, but levels of the unconscious mind that are just taking note of how the body functions. And everything we're doing, all our training is about making the, the body function together as a system in an improved way. And we need certain kinds of data to be able to do that. If we just start banging the bag as hard as we can straight away, we won't get that at all. We'll just completely lose our structural integration and our structural principles. But if we're disciplined and we build it step by step, I guarantee you, you'll be hitting that bag so hard. Everyone in the gym will be, be coming up to you and saying, how do you do that? So the first thing, let's think about a couple of general principles first and some, some things that are wrong. Where are we going to hit? So we're going to start by thinking about today. We'll just look at jab. We're not going to go any further than that. Where do we hit on the bag? Well, first of all, we think about where's our head. 
Of course, we want to be able to hit at different points, but that's our general, our general start point. Next, when we hit the bag, well, we'll talk about this more in a moment, but we'll say for now, you don't want to hit and drop like that. Hit and drop, hit and drop, hit and drop. I mean, there's two things in there. There's, there's, there's people who hit and keep the guard low like this all the time and drop, drop, drop the guard arm. And then this hitting and dropping the hitting arm, which you see all the time. We don't want that. So we're going to drill it out in the way that the way that we train and it's going to be over determined because doing it in the right way is going to help us improve our level so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the right distance and we're going to we want to be about there wants to be still a curve in the arm like that so if you're too far away and you've got a stretch out like that you know you're, you're too far away but you can start like this get your arm fully stretched out like that get your feet together and just move the front foot to the point where you can just got a a bend on your arm like that and assume assume the position of basic guard stance and you can see straight away how close this is to the target of course of course once we've got our each one principles once they're building up we can change we can hit from different positions and all of that stuff but we're going to start from the absolute brass tacks basics back back to the beginning this is what we call reaching the 95% point where, okay, we've been practicing stuff on the air. We're going to continue to do that because we're going to bring in much more complex ideas around footwork and routing and release of force and so on. But for our basic punches, they're just not getting any better, just practicing them on, on their own. Practicing some more advanced stuff around routing and so on will help us, but this is going to help us a lot more. At the 95% point, it would take more effort to get 5% better than it took us to get as good as we are at that point, and it would take longer. So think about someone who, in traditional wushu, they practice horse dance, they can do it perfectly after a year, but they think, I need to get it 5% better. And they spend 30 years just practicing horse dance. Before you know it, all your time is wasted and you got 3% better at horse dance. What was the point? So at the 95% point, we think, it's it's easier to progress by shifting to something else so you know maybe you even if you're hitting the bag full contact and you think i'm not getting any more power well maybe at that point you could do some weight training or think about how do i use zhang zhuang to relax the musculature more there's always something you can do that's different that will holistically improve everything overall anyway we call that in the 95 percent point and we're always training different things anyway and we're always looking at when can we escalate the basics or when do we change what we actually mean by a basic so we've been practicing stuff on the air and really we're not getting any better at that at that posture by just continuing to practice it on the air so what we think is right okay let's think now what's different when you hit an object so we've got our lock point where we hit up to and stop and then when we hit an object it becomes the the hit point what's different well a bag like this, and, and the reason why we want a bag to do this, not a pad, not someone holding a hand out, not a little cotton ball like I used to use in Yao's each one. The reason we want a bag is it's solid and it gives solid feedback back into the body. And that's what we want. Think about that. You know, you, that medical procedure where they put a dye in the body and the dye goes all the way through and then they can x-ray it and they can see like a radioactive dye or something like that. And remember, that's exactly what we're doing when we're doing Zhang Zhuang, where we're feeling every part of the body, giving the intent, the, the data to start knitting together the body as a whole system. This is exactly the same. That force when you hit the bag goes back in the body and it reveals all the weak points, all the bits where it's too loose, all the bits where your posture is wrong, the routing is wrong and so on. So we're going to start and what we start with first, it's going to help us avoid just doing this hit and drop the hand like that. We want hit and stop, not hit and drop. We're going to do hit and stop. And we're going to do it, I'll talk more about it in a moment, but we're just going to do it like, like that, very light, like that. Hit the bag like. It's okay if the bag, if the bag swings a bit. We'll talk about good bag habits another time. 
you know, people always stop in the bag from resetting is a bad habit, but the setup I've got here. And what we don't want to do as such, if the bag really starts swinging, by the way, don't punch it as it's swinging back, just stop it and reset it. Usually if I reset, I don't do this, but people do like, like that, you know. Bim, 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 bim. I'm gonna reset it. I'll reset it like that and then, you know, I'll always, if I'm on, I'm on, you know, like same with drills, if you're on, you're on. Keep sharp, keep focused. So we're hitting it really, really light, but really, really interestingly, we're bringing our muscular engagement up. So remember I talked about in our normal feeling when we're like this, it's approximately 50-50 between relaxation and tension, what we call elastic, elastic force. The Mandarin word for elastic is the word for re relax and tense put together. So that's, you know, it's, it's a combination between those two, but it's not numerology. It's a ratio that has to change, obviously. And when we bring it up to the, to the contact point, we increase our muscular, our muscular engagement so that it's much more skewed towards tension. And I know tension is the wrong word because it makes you think of 100% tense straight away. That's why I'm saying muscular engagement. But the posture should be 80% tense at that point, just for a split second when you hit. That's what will allow the force that you're generating around Farley to move into the, to move into the target. There's other things around that, like I'll talk about another point the complexities around what we call skewing a posture that allows us to ensure that, for example, if we're hitting the fist, of course, every part of the body pretty much is like farly releasing force, but somehow most of the force goes to the, the contact point. That's all just in the way that the posture, that the configuration is constructed or what we call skewed, the way that it, um, the way that it's particularly balanced to allow the force real kinetic force that you're generating to go to a particular point to the fist for example more than to the to the elbow back like that's not completely balanced it's the kind of thing i talked about in the the video on hun yuan li that actually the way that the posture is balanced even though it's only omnidirectional force the way that the posture is balanced is such that it isn't the same amount of force going out in every direction it's focused on one point more than any other that's Again, it's something that you learn by practicing like this. So, But the interesting thing that I was talking about is that this 80% tension is exactly the same when I hit absolutely full contact. And you can go and see me hitting the bag, much heavier bag than this, full contact, whacking it. And when I do that, actually the amount of tension in my body is exactly the same. It's just that I'm doing it faster and sharper and there's more farly in the, in the parts right sharper there's farly in the posture but the level of relaxation and tension is absolutely identical to when i'm doing this so we're breaking that element off from our overall that easily gets lost that can easily get lost when we're just practicing like we're practicing the, the configuration how do we configure the posture we're practicing that we're trying to get relaxation and tension we're trying to get farly and they all kind of merge into one. But actually that ability to have this kind of elastic movement and then change it at the last second. So it's got to be elastic to get to the, it's got to be at that 50-50 point to hold the structure together sufficiently so that we can use all our screen forces and bodily tensions, oppositional forces, rooting. It's got to be at that 50-50 point. That's what keeps our intent locked into the body. That's what muscular engagement does again it's like that dye going through the body it, the intent locks onto it and it can work this robot but to be able at the last minute use that to generate force then at the last minute bring it up to the, the point the tension point of hitting where it's 80 percent tense that's quite a difficult and sophisticated skill fortunately if you're disciplined, it's not that difficult to train, but you've got to be disciplined. So we're going to start with when we're hitting at our hitting at our own head height like this, and we're going to use screen force, but you've got to be careful. The way screen force works is when you see someone doing the each one punch and the wrist is bent like that, you always think that can't work. And I've said before, I remember my coach saying, I know it looks wrong. And the reason it works is you don't 
have your hand like that and then punch in like that. Obviously that would be wrong to do that. You have your hand and when it hits the contact point, then it screws in. Screws in usually to these, not always, but these three knuckles here screw into the screw into the contact point like like that. It doesn't over screw over like that. It's not going to go much further than that, but it hits in and it screws in like that. And you can see some people in each one now do it much more like that with the the flat, the thumb up, much more like um, Sui Weebin and his students tend to have a much more like Beng Chuan posture like that. So they've eliminated the extra screwing force off the off the end of the punch. I don't know why, you'd have to ask them, I've no idea why. Whereas if you look at the Yao brothers and most early Yao's people, um, yeah, there's quite a few anyway. And usually they've got this on. Just seen, just seen on YouTube some of oh, Wang Wang Binghui's son doing this. Also, he also trained with Yao's on, so got this, you know, get the screen force on the end of the punch. But the important thing for us is we don't want to hit like that. And we've got to be really, really careful even doing light back work. And I've nearly put my wrist out myself. It is possible. I've nearly popped it out myself. But we want to hit, hit and screw in. As we hit the target, it screws in like that. And that's what makes it work. It locks into the, the point where it hits. And also the roundedness of the punch means that it's in line with the arm. So even though it's, it's screwing in like that, it's actually all in line in an arc and it uses the strength of an arc. But being able to do it effectively is one of the things that we're actually gonna train here now, but you need to be really, really careful about it. So we get our, all of that together in our posture and we're going to be really really disciplined and we're going to think about things like don't start with your hands close together like that there's an exercise in yao's each one where you say like there's a spring and you pull the spring apart like that which helps you get the right kind of rotational foul but it also tends to make people put their hands together like that so it's quite negative in that sense so if you are going to use a visualization like that which you can do when we you want to do it a little bit faster make sure you start with your hands apart not like that together something you see all the time unfortunately in each one so we're going to start and also what we want to do is eliminate any pre-movement so we want to just like standing so you can see the progression from standing into this so from here no pre-movement and then just very relaxed into the hit and stop like that And because we don't want any pre-movement, that's why it looks so slow that I'm taking so much time in the posture. Because yeah, later on we can go, you know, as, as you improve a little bit. But even as you improve, even if you get like to elite level, you want this, you want this concept of just being absolutely still and then just going with the going with the movement. Like um, I'm not there's plenty of video movement hitting the bag full contacts, I'm not going to do it here, it's not It's not super secure, I have to say. So that's why it looks a little bit slower, because we want to think, just like standing, and we want to get that feeling that we have in standing, very relaxed like that, and then engaged, and then just straight out, hit and stop like that, then back, and then back. And see how... I'm just pulling straight back like that. Just as the leg goes down, the hand goes down like that. That's not how we do it normally as we know. Normally as we do when we hit, and you can see now the reason why. One, it phases back as we pull back. One, see the leg's already going, the pivot root is already coming back when we punch like that. Just, I've talked about plenty about how that phasing works. But for this, we don't do it like that because we're just going to stop it at that point anyway and then just pull back I'm not going to say how many to do like I, for me I always find it really really useful to do everything in sets of eights not superstitious but you know eight is a lucky number in, in China and I just think eight is very often a fantastic repetition number it's like ten sometimes is too many of something if it's hard Eight just seems perfect, but you can do multiples of eight, but it doesn't really matter. It's all about your discipline. The more work you can do, 
the better you can get. The only thing that really matters is to be absolutely consciously aware. When are you at the, the 95% point? When do you need to escalate the basic or change to something else? We'll talk about escalating basics another time. So I'll do it the other way so that you can see it. So just like our standing Zhang posture and then very relaxed and back. Hit and stop. What I'm getting there, because I've got the, if you haven't got the right kind of consistency, that's what you want to train first, consistency. The way that the system is linking together and thinking about, well, I don't just want to, if I just do it with my arm like that sort of thing you see all the time, that's totally different to, see, look at the energy in that line, look at the way that the bag's moving. If I use my whole body structure and correct consistency, like I get more, more of that, like it's not even it's slower like the posture itself was slower than like if I'm doing that there's no what we call like it's just bouncing off there's no kinetic um there's no penetration of the target what we call inertial strike so inertia is when like you hit you hit and the energy's got nowhere to go so it goes straight up if you've got good consistency you can do that without much power at all so See the energy go. It doesn't. It's about body consistency. You can hear it a lot better on the, you know, the heavy bag with a big chain. In fact, the heavier the bag, the better. You hit it, and the, the the chain goes goes up like that. So if you do that, like you hear it's hardly making any noise. But when I do it with the each one way with whole body connectivity, it's the same amount of. It's the same amount of force or less even, but you get more of a sound because of the there's more power that the body's generated going into the going into the strike. That is not as even if I do it slower, is not as powerful as when I just I engage my whole body and and transmission of force into the when I do that most of the force is being dissipated back into my arm, the looseness of the, the looseness of the joints. When I do that, all the force is being directed towards the, towards the posture, towards the target. It's a different, it's a different way of punching. And that's what we want to train. We want to train that body consistency, that whole body structure. So now what we want to do, we want to do exactly the same thing, but it's just like when you're standing. When you're standing, you're being mindful of every little part of the body and how it's all linking together. Now you want to do exactly that with this punch, being really in the moment, being really mindful of your physical posture. So starting off from nothing and just trying to feel where is the force in the body? How is the how is the configuration being stacked? And the same configuration, we use this concept of stacking, the same configuration can be stacked in multiple different ways and needs to be to be a completely intuitive system you, know, you need to be able to hit from all multiple different angles but for this posture for this basic template jab is it being stacked right where is the force in the body and just by doing it like this you can really become super mindful of your own physical posture and where it's right and wrong And I know, I know it looks daft, and all other people will be like, well, I just ate it, right? Well, it's a different, it's a different training method. The next thing that we'll find, if we if we're transitioning into doing something new like this, because we were at the 95% point with what we were doing, we've got this very interesting phenomenon that that maybe first of all you hardly be able to you won't get it right. It just feels totally wrong. You can't get the whole just because I'm doing it like this doesn't mean that other people will be able to do it straight away. I certainly couldn't. I certainly couldn't just do it like this straight away. <laughs> Even though it looks like it looks so simple, but just getting the right and getting everything integrated 
exactly the same way. What I'm saying is exactly the same way as when you do it on the air. Being able to do it on the bag with this new feedback, even though it's not a lot of feedback, to keep exactly the same posture, only refined because of the feedback coming from the bag. Not to, things like that start happening. All kinds of things start happening when you start trying to learn this way. To get it exactly the same, but with the contact point, what you will find straight away usually is it's hard at first, and then you'll do a couple that are right. Eventually get up to like, you can do three that are right. Three out of eight will be right. And it's like five out of eight. And then eventually eight out of eight are absolutely spot on. When you can do that, you pre you're pretty much at the 95% point. So you can move on to doing something else. Next, in exactly the same way, and exactly the same mindfulness, and exactly the same kind of start, we're going to do all of that, except we're going to pull back into our guard posture like, like that. Still keeping it quite relaxed, and if you can't get it, like what we always say, like if you're not if you're not getting to the point where you're able to do three out of eight right, then the task is too difficult. You've got to break it down. So you can break it down like you can break it down like just like this first, and just slightly improve the slightly increase the the power. But you need about that level of power where you th where you feel it feedback into your body the first level of feedback into the body. No more powerful than that at first. That's what you need up to that point of point of power. So we're gonna go and then relax back like that. We're not even using, we don't even want the Farley on it as such now. We want the very relaxed version of the posture. Just like practicing on the air like that. So we haven't even got that rotational Farley on the posture. And look how I'm starting, my hands aren't in fists to start with, it's this, you could hold a bird and it would fly away half, half, half open, half closed. Like that. And it just, one of the things that helps you get the right amount of tension into the posture is this idea of like, so before, like you're holding an egg and you, you burst the egg like that into the, into the posture. I've criticised that idea, but it's quite useful for getting it like this. So, and then also one of the things that, that that's very important that has to become kind of it exists in like the calculations that it, the intent are making that are beyond usually conscious. Not always, but usually you need it will be beyond conscious understanding and that's distance from the target what we call range and ranging that you're training yourself like so you can feel like well is this too far away you know if i here my arm's fully extended so i'm too far away or, or maybe i'm close but i'm leaning too far back with it i'm over exaggerating this posture so just try to get the right so that when you hit there's still curvature there's still stored force in the in the arm teaches you that and as we as we move on back work is one of the things that really helps you improve your ranging and footwork ironically so you see that little just we want to just push it a little bit after the and again from stillness no excess movement whatsoever no tells people find that very hard it's as I said before, it's what we call the yips in darts. Well, we don't play darts. The yips where you can't let go of a dart and professional darts players get it. And you see people when they train like this, particularly when they've got to do it with power, they just, they can't trigger the movements to go. So you've got to train this. No excess movement whatsoever, no tells, nothing from absolute stillness. Then you go. I did one too fast and we don't want it that fast yet. Just like that. And what we want to look for is all those little things. Is the arms just at the right level of curvature when we hit? Are we hitting at the right point? Is everything else right? Is the rooting right? Is it phasing right? Because now, now that we're pulling the arm back, we should be bringing in the phase of the foot. 
so that the foot is, see the foot's going down already. As the screen force is going in, the foot is already coming down, phasing the punch, just like we do when we do it on the air. Checking that all those things are correct. If they are, and that might take time, so don't worry, it's about discipline. Self, you know, like the will to do it. Build the building block step by step. If that's right, then you can move on just to bringing up the, the power more into being a little bit more explosive. And this is what one of, like in Yao's e I used to use like these little cotton balls, about yay big, and you can just hit them and, and ping them. And it helps you see if you've got the right kind of farley. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that useful. To, I, think it's, I think it's more useful to use a bag like this, but you get more useful feedback into your structure it's not just about what we're breaking down now is it's not just about the ability to use farly rotational power around the axis in this case it's about being able to transfer that force to the contact point and in a meaningful way that doesn't for example ping you back like that which is the kind of thing that can happen with kicks really really easily if your kick is aligned wrong but it can happen with punches so what what we do next is start bringing in more farly just step by step we just start making it a little bit sharper but we keep everything that we've done before and we keep like we need to be really mindful i mean a lot is going on subconsciously the intent is accruing all of this data that it can use but we can do a lot of it mindfully just like in just like in standing feeling the, the posture searching for where is it right where is it wrong now bringing in a little bit more farly we want a little bit of a sharper hit on the way or fly back out the window go on a little bit of a sharper move like that so just bringing in a little bit of a sharper movement and a little bit more power into the into the punch so a little bit sharper, a little bit more power into the punch, and we'll bring it straight back like that because it's just it's better for the Farley to just go with the somatic bounce in this case. So like that. So I'm deliberately hitting it when it's going away from me because it's dangerous to punch it on the on the on the string back. So there's loads of little things that will go on like, like I felt like my hand dropped too much then so one of the things that this is going to teach you is that every time you do it actually is slightly different it's just it's just in the nature of reality obviously every time you take a step it's minutely different from every other step you've ever taken but getting your your average your average level around a certain point so the other way again just bringing it a little bit nice and light it's nice and light there's hardly any power in it so you can build up to that level of i mean it's not even power really it's, it's about consistency but you can build up to that practice the basic exercise first until you feel like you're at the 95 percent point with that that could take weeks or it might take days or it might take an hour it just depends it doesn't matter what matters is to be disciplined and do the practice to just build step by step but when you do get up to this stage slightly different principle comes into play that now what we're looking for is the golden ones the ones that you hit it and it's like that was it, it was like 50 percent better than any ones that you've ever done before so like, oh, what was that you know what was that then you're searching for that again to get that when that happens that tells you about your body's potential that it can do that it's not it's not imagination you've just done it you know you can do it it's like well what was it that i did and then you've got to try and find that again and that's not always easy because that's something that the intent did and you won't always consciously be able to replicate that but once you know you can do it then it's just the way that the intent works that you're giving it that instruction that you're searching for that remember i said it's like that link the the button that's outside the cage that you try to press and you've got to use a, a stick to get to it and that stick is visualization visualizing that 
perfect one that you did and just try to capture that again signal into the intent that you want that and that will always happen by the way and it also very interestingly it's very closely related to emotional states and things like that so if you're really really angry really upset you can very often generate a lot more power you kind of let go of for all the tension you bring in with state mental states like that you can nevertheless somehow let go of some other things that allow you to generate just something that's some other kind of power that you can't always do and what you've got to do is try and access that in a healthy way like not anger not stress but like wrath this idea of wrath like cold wrath and when that happens and when you actually have a fight like that you'll understand that feeling like people always panic and think how would i how would i make this work in reality like that feeling of wrath when you get that that just it eliminates all doubt about your ability and the intent just takes over and you do it so you try to get that feeling and that's a mindfulness that you need to start bringing in very early on into the you bring it into your standing just like the kind of thing Wang Shan Jai talks about and you bring it into this the moment you start bringing it into this you'll start getting tension in the body then you're back into this battle just like standing to try and just get the balance right but So to make a few adjustments then like I was going from here so I to use a little bit of short power in the shoulders to just get the get the posture in all those things you can start doing and if they happen naturally that's fine so we brought it up to short sharp and then of course the next stage is you can just take it up to a an even sharper movement but you don't want the full power you just want not full power just sharp movement into the minimal minimal try and break it down so there's like there's no tells there's no movement you just stand and it's really useful exercise just to do it like standing and just hold and you and you're feeling your own mind like like triggers like oh I should have gone then like that. don't 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 just hold it a little bit longer don't go just because you feel like it's exactly the same when you spy and you think, oh, I could have hit him then, but oh, it's just I didn't go. Like, try to get over that. Just hold, hold, hold. Just practice, practice like that. I think that's enough to get started on with that. We'll look at, we'll look at the crosses separately. That's enough to get started on and enough ideas around it. So start with that, get a bag strung up if you can somewhere. You've got to do whatever you can, keep training no matter what. Have a go at that. And then we'll keep continuing with the other stuff that we're looking at and learning, but we'll come back, we'll keep coming back and looking at different postures and how we can use those. Look at the cross next. Follow exactly the same process though. Okay, one love. Thanks very much for watching. and I'll see you in the next one.